This is not a leopard gecko, and it's not an African fat tail gecko either. This is going to be the next most popular reptile in the reptile hobby. So today, let's talk all about Chinese cave geckos. Now when I say Chinese cave geckos are going to be the next most popular pet reptile in the reptile trade, I don't know if that's actually true or not. There's no way for me to, I don't have a crystal ball, mirror mirror on the wall, who is the most popular gecko of them all. I don't know that for sure, but I'll tell you all the reasons why I think they're going to be absolutely awesome and uh, this is going to double as a care guide too, so let's just get right into it. I'll hold on to this guy for as long as I can, but unlike leopard geckos, these guys, uh, they like to walk off of things. And the main difference, I think, because I know the question's gonna be in the comments section, I'll just answer it. The main difference is their feet. I had to put this guy back because he used his to launch at the camera. The main difference is their feet that I can see. Their eyes are red and their banding is different. The coloration is different. They come from China, where leopard geckos come from the Middle East, that area of the world. African fat tails come, okay, this is not a comparison. Anyway, the reason I think these guys are gonna be so awesome is because they are so similar to to two species of geckos that are already super popular. And these guys have a one key difference, one key difference that I think is gonna make them even more popular than leopard geckos and African fat tails eventually. But this crepuscular animal from the south of China, these guys only get to eight or nine inches. So very similar actually to their counterparts, their close cousins, African fat tails and leopard geckos. So the size is very similar. They look very similar, but what about caging? Their enclosure is gonna be right around 20 gallons. Some people will say 10 gallons. Anybody who recommends a 10 gallon for an African fat tail or a leopard gecko would probably also say a 10 gallon for one of these guys. I'm not in that camp. I personally think a 20 is better, but I mean, it's. Maybe it's not wrong. I just like bigger enclosures. For a couple of them, you can cohab them in the same ways that you could cohab leopard geckos, so females only together. There's a, do your research. There's a video right here, actually, if you wanna watch that. But you do need a bigger enclosure than a 20. I would recommend at least a 30, probably a 40 for a couple of them. And I wouldn't recommend keeping a male full time in there just because he'll breed them to the point where they get really, maybe not sick, but stressed. So an enclosure of that size, and in the enclosure, Chinese cave geckos have a higher humidity, so I think something like a coconut core that is just slightly damp, and you can even create a gradient where on the warm side it's more humid, on the cool side it's less humid, that type of thing, and give them a humid hide as well. And we'll get into more humidity and heat and things like that in a second, but for their enclosure, I would recommend a naturalistic substrate, although you could use a paper towel, something like that. And in, inside the enclosure, we just need like regular stuff. Stuff. Hides, some sort of enrichment, stuff for them to climb on or through, although they are terrestrial, they're not gonna like go scaling rock backgrounds, probably for the most part, they, they could, they have pretty robust claws, but also hides. You need something for them to hide in or behind and uh, something just like a turned over coconut thing or whatever, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this is a care guide, not to do exactly what I say. It's just kind of an outline of how to take care of these awesome creatures. But one thing I will say is bioactive enclosures work really well. You can have isopods and springtails in with these guys and they do better than with leopard gecko enclosures because these guys have a more humid requirement. And let's just get to that next. Heat, humidity, and lighting. First, right off the bat, Lighting, you don't need any special lighting. They need a photo period. So 12 hours light, 12 hours dark, or 16, eight, however you wanna do it. They just need to know when it's day and when it's night, like basically every other creature you're gonna keep. They don't need UVB, although UVB has been shown to a little bit of benefit for some of these animals that are crepuscular, so you could add that, just maybe a lower percentage, right? Like a shade dweller type UVB. In terms of their temperature, these guys are cooler, much cooler than leopard geckos. And that is why I think they might be a little bit more popular, maybe not today or tomorrow or next year, but eventually, especially if we can find morphs of these guys, I think that the popularity is really gonna rise because 65 to 75 degrees, that's pretty crazy for a gecko like this. Where leopard geckos are gonna be into the 80s, these guys are basically room temperature. Other care guides, you're gonna see people say you don't need a hotspot or really anything 
to create a temperature gradient, but I personally don't agree with this. I'm not saying that these people are wrong. I'm just saying for me, I think that every reptile should have an opportunity to go to a warmer and cooler side within the parameters set for that species. So for this example, I would say that, well, what I do is I give a 77 degree hotspot, 77 degree hotspot on the hot side, and then on the cool side, there's no hotspot. So you're kind of creating, even if it's a minor gradient, they still have somewhere a little bit cooler or warmer to go, and you have hides on both sides and the whole thing. I'm not saying this is right, I'm just saying this is what I do and has been working for me. Something to take into consideration is if you have a reptile room and it gets up to 80 degrees for most of the day, you might want to keep these guys in a cooler section of your house. If your reptile room only gets to say 75, make sure whatever enclosure they're in isn't getting higher than 75 uh, for very long at a time. They can handle up to 80 for a short time, but eventually high temperatures will be lethal for these guys. And as for that humidity, most people say rate right around 50%. I like to say between 50 and 70. Like again, this is a guide, right? So if you're not at 55, you're at 56 or 59, like your animal is not gonna die, right? The reaper's not coming because you missed it by four degrees. Somewhere in that range. So if it fluctuates from 50 to 70, then you're, you're good. I just wouldn't have it, you know, to the extremes for most of the time. If you could do it dead on, do it right, I would say, you know, try for 60%. But always have that humid hide in there so that if they do need a more humid environment, then you can do that. And the humid hides that I make, like it's a Tupperware with a hole cut in the middle of it and some substrate like coconut core mixed with sphagnum moss. Very easy, but you can make it look more realistic than this ugly thing that I use. Diet is really simple. I always say that if you feed your gecko, it's gonna live longer than if you don't. I highly recommend you feed it, but the simplicity of it is very much the same as their cousins, leopard geckos and African fat tails. I wonder if they're actually related. They're insectivores. Now the big difference is they're at a cooler climate. So a lot of people, and this is debated, but I'll just let you know what I've read. Some people say that they can't digest mealworms and superworms and that type of exoskeleton as well as say a leopard gecko because they have a higher temperature, which means that their digestive system is firing a little bit I don't know if better is the word, but differently, I guess, right? Crickets and doobie roaches are what most people who are very experienced with these guys will tell you to feed them. If you are in, say, Canada, like me, and uh, you can't get doobie roaches because it's against the law, well, crickets would be perfect. You can also feed them black soldier fly larvae, and if you're interested in that, well, 10% discount. Code WWR at checkout. If you go through my friends at Grub Terra, absolutely amazing product. I really do stand behind them. Black soldier fly larva has become a staple for a lot of my geckos, including Chinese cave geckos. And you can feed as treats things like silkworms, and there's other feeders as well. Of course, always do more research than watching some Mr. Clean look alike talk to a camera before you buy an animal, but as a staple, crickets and dubia roaches was what I would recommend. And of course, always dust with your supplement powder as well. Calcium, vitamin D, that sort of thing. Again, you'll do your research and figure out ratios. And maybe the most important thing, behavior. Because at the end of the day, as long as you can take care of something, the next most important thing is do you want to interact with it? And that's the interesting thing about keeping reptiles and that's their behavior in a nutshell. So with these guys, very similar in my limited experience keeping them in my personal collection. Uh, very similar to like a leopard gecko or uh, African fat tail. This is like becoming a comparison, which I didn't want it to be, but that is probably the best way to talk about them because everyone knows what those animals interact like. Now these guys are smaller, they're not full grown. And when I got them, I got them from a place that rescued them and they all had regrown tails. So. I imagine that they weren't having the best care before the person, whoever they got them from. These ones are gonna take a little bit of time to tame. By no means are they bitey. They are a little bit flighty, but they're not very fast. So they're not gonna like run away from you and run up a wall. They can't do that at all. Like a crested gecko, for example, or a day gecko or a toke, where if it goes up your wall, good luck. You'll never see it again. These guys are easy to catch, but they do have a propensity to uh, like try to fall off of stuff. Oh, and by the way, when you see these shots, I have several blankets and pillows and uh, like they're not gonna fall and hurt themselves and none of them fell, but they are doing this and they can pull themselves back up. They kind of reminded me of if Mufasa, this is so sad. If Mufasa made it in that first section of the Lion King, that's kind of what it reminded me of when I first saw these guys climbing down and then climbing back up off of this ledge. 
which is just like a wood nightstand basically. So it feels like their claws are not only larger, like their claws are a little bit longer, but they can use them a little bit better to climb surfaces. So just something I've noticed, then read anything about this, just something I noticed when filming this B-roll. They have really strong feet. So a slow and deliberate, very unlikely to bite animal that is actually really fun to watch. And lastly, before we wrap this up, cost and availability, because none of this means anything to you if you can't afford or find a Chinese cave gecko. Really good news, neither are hard to do. Now this is kind of new because a few years ago, even, I don't know, I got into this hobby 12 years ago, I never heard of Chinese cave geckos. They weren't on any reptile expo tables. I didn't see them in pet shops. I didn't see them in reptile shops, nothing. But they are much more popular now than they were before, which I think is absolutely amazing. But they are a little bit more expensive than say a leopard gecko, but not by much. I'm talking about like 100 or 200 bucks. I've seen them as high as 300 for like a proven breeder female, but it's not gonna break the bank for you to have them. And because they're in such a small enclosure, or a reasonably sized enclosure. The startup cost isn't insane either. It's actually very manageable for most budgets. So I think that because you can find them more easily now, and there's a lot more captive breeding going on as well, and because they're available, basically you can find them, I think that uh, these guys are gonna be the next most popular thing. You heard it here first. Well, probably not. There's other people that say that too, but if this is the first video you watch, then you heard it here first. That's how that works. There you go. If you wanted to know about other reptiles that I've had for several months but didn't talk about, Patreon. Thank you guys so much, the Patreon supporters. I've been posting pictures of these Chinese cave geckos for weeks now. I have a, a few animals actually in my collection that only Patreon knows about. You get discounts on the merch, these videos several days early, and uh, top secret information. Yeah, top secret. Crazy. WWR is a new reptile. Top secret. Anyway, we do videos twice a week. Hit like. Hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, and uh, see you on Thursday.